Hello, I'm Daniel Sabo, and this is the Thursday Reading. Every week I will read one chapter of my novel, Peter Morris, a novel in 36 chapters. Peter Morris. The word sein signifies in German both things, to be and to belong to him. Franz Kafka. Chapter 1. Peter Morris went to the zoo every morning. He liked to see the monkeys groom each other. He was a lonely tall man with heavy black boots. He painted most of the time, and when he was not, he dreamt of making friends. He was not very successful at the latter, and was quite pessimistic about the future. Why would he find a friend if he had not found one yet? He often tried to understand the reasons for his repeated failures, but he could find no explanation, and there were plenty of instances of aborted friendships. Once he had met a reasonably pretty red-haired girl, they had talked about life in general, about painting. He hated modern art, not because he did not understand it, but because he thought it was mainly terribly bad. After just half an hour of pleasant conversation, he had become obsessed with the idea of marrying the girl. Convinced that he would fail, he invented an improbable excuse and ran away, wishing her to be happy. He never saw her again. With men his age, it was no different although the word marriage did not enter his mind. He craved for a true, simple friendship, similar to those he had read about in books, where two people came together through comical circumstances or extraordinary coincidences, and despite their differences, struck up a friendship straight away. He had read the, re the story of two young men who had hit it off after one of them, a big, sturdy Dutchman from a well-established family, had picked up in his yogurt car a frail, intellectual, dark-haired music lover. The fact that the story was quite unlikely, and that in the end the music lover was hit by a meteorite after his girlfriend, whom he shared with the sturdy Dutchman, had fallen into a coma because a tree had crashed onto the aforementioned yogurt car, did not bother him. He did not wonder whether these things really happened or not. He just wanted them to happen to him. But his life was not a novel. No such encounter happened to him. As a teenager, when strong fusion-like friendships are formed through sports, common interests in girls, or outcast brotherhoods, nothing happened. He did not like sports, did not care for girls, and yet was not really excluded from any group, though not part of any. The cool were too cool, the rejected too rejected. Things changed when his parents died in an ordinary car accident. Not wanting to be asked stupid questions about how he felt or hear sympathetic comments from kids who had lost their dogs, he closed himself mechanically from other people. It did not make much difference regarding friends, since he had none. But whereas people had looked upon him as a not particularly interesting young man, now they considered him slightly odd, even bizarre, and avoided contact with him altogether. Not easy to make friends in these circumstances. That is when Peter Morris reverted to animals. He had never thought of himself as an animal lover, but since he had started going to the zoo every day, he had become acquainted with each animal's habits, preferences and even diets. Apart from the monkeys, who managed to pull a smile out of him, his favourite animal was the tiger. He would observe him from a distance, as though not to be seen by him. He felt that he was in reality quite like him. The tiger did not want to be bothered, did not seem to need anyone. If people came too close, he would simply walk away, with what looked like disdain and contempt. It was not that Peter Morris and the tiger had contempt for people, but he knew that this was what they must have thought. The first time he had seen the tiger, it had reminded him of a famous poem he had learned at school. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. He did not really understand the meaning of the poem, but the lines were easy to remember. There was no forest in the poem, just the night. The night was like a forest where you could lose yourself. The forest, with all its tales, had always scared him a little. It made him think of something else he had read more recently. Man has a natural dread of walking in the dark. What wonder, then, that he naturally has a dread of the absolute. He had never been afraid of the dark. His mother had told him once that Jesus was the light and that he was always with him. At the time, he had believed her. Was the tiger Jesus? He did not know, but he knew he should keep these quotes and questions to himself, lest people took him for a freak. 
which they kind of did anyway. Thank you. This was the Thursday reading by Daniel Sebel. See you next week.